Slackers, welcome back. My name is Katherine, and today we're looking at Spotify. This is for educational and informational purposes only, so please don't go hack Spotify. As some of you know, I live in a pod. Hey guys! Now, there are a lot of other people that live in the pods, including makeup artists, singer-songwriters, musicians, artists, YouTubers. And so whether it's the YouTube algorithm, the Spotify algorithm, it's all about the algorithm, and that's how you become famous now. It's not being played on the radio or knowing the right people. It's purely based on the algorithm. Anyways, one of them released a new single, and they asked me, hey, you know, you do software coding, right? Could you hack Spotify and make my single number one? Well, that's, that's a nice idea. Software developers, though, are not hackers. We really just build things and refactor things. We don't hack things. Probably about 5% or even less know actually how to hack something, um, and if they do, they probably work on the cybersecurity side and they're working on the opposite part of that, so defending their organization versus illegally hacking other websites. Of course, to figure out anything, all you really need to know is how to Google, and that's something we software developers are really good at. So now it's really a question of legality. Should you hack Spotify versus could you hack Spotify? But let's just say we wanted to hack Spotify and make this single number one. Think of the big major hacks that have happened. People stealing the Game of Thrones last episode and releasing it online, or people getting access to the Game of Thrones script for season eight. You also have people hacking Target to get credit card information. These are all things that everyone in the world would love to have. It's harder to single out exactly who did it because the motive behind it, it's so general. Anyone could have done it. If you put your single as number one on a major music streaming platform, it's pretty obvious who hacked you or who commissioned the hack. It's obviously the person that, that that's number one and doesn't have the following necessarily to be number one. It's too surprising for this person that has never released a single before or has never released anything before, maybe has things out but they haven't gotten a lot of viewage, to immediately overnight be number one. For the Game of Thrones episode and for the target credit card information, we're also getting information. We're not trying to change anything about the episode, like that's a whole other type of hack where you are trying to change the footage of the Game of Thrones episode to when it's streamed it shows something else or to actually change the credit card information so that it hits someone else's credit card versus the right credit card. It's a whole different operation. You're not just getting access to something, but you're getting access to something, changing it, and hoping no one notices. Okay, so you can't get your single number one just by hacking Spotify because they would find you immediately and then that would end that game. But let's think about how songs get discovered. If you're pretty unfamous and say it's the first song or one of the first songs you've ever released and you haven't gotten a ton of streams yet, no one's going to go to this search box up here and search your name. No one's going to know what to type because they're not going to know who you are. They're not going to know your name. On YouTube, it's not about you getting discovered. It's about your content getting discovered. And you do that by essentially going into one of the main gaps. So you go into gaming or beauty or vlogs or something that's already being created out there. So then your video is recommended as another option for them to watch. Or it has to be something people are searching and there's no video content on it yet. But likely if people are searching for it, the content has been created or something like it has been created. Maybe not not your version of it, but something. On Spotify, it's all about the playlists. If your song gets on a playlist with 3 million followers and it has, say, 100 songs on it, your song is probably going to be listened to. Spotify has a freemium model to where if you don't pay, you have to hit the shuffle button, and if you do pay, you can choose whatever song you'd like. But because they have so many people that don't pay for the service of being able to choose what song they like, as a shuffle mode, your song is going to come up at some point. And then you're going to get listeners and possibly fans, and that's how you become popular on Spotify. On YouTube, it's not about the playlists at all, which is really interesting. This means it's not really about getting your song number one in the United States or internationally. It's about getting on the right playlist. So how does one get on the right playlist? Well, playlists on Spotify are created in two ways. They're created either by Spotify curators or people that are using the platform. They create playlists, they get following or it's created by the algorithm. So let's say somehow you get access to the algorithm and you edit it so your song is added to everyone's daily mix. 
That would be nice, but it's a lot of work. It would be much easier to just pick out some of the curated playlists or pick out some of the users that make curated playlists and just add your song to a few of those. Maybe make sure the following isn't too big, so maybe it's not 3 million followers, but they have, say, 50,000 followers or something that's a little bit lower tier. Just sneak your song on there. Would they notice? That's a question. Well, of course, you could also just ask the person, figure out who created that playlist, send them your song, and see if they'll add it. This seems like the more legal way to do things, and so let's go around and see what we can find. And I'm just gonna Google how to add a song to someone else's Spotify playlist. And so really, you know, is that a legal action? Can I just add it to someone's playlist without even letting them know? You can add, you can have a collaborative playlist. And so say you want other people to add to your playlist, you can add them as a user. Uh, let's see. So that's mainly the way it looks like here, is collaboration playlists. And so if they say you're throwing a party, you could do that. So what if we do how to get your song on someone else's playlist? Because that's really what we want to do. Not just add it, but we want to get them to do it. Okay, so you can submit a song directly for Spotify playlist consideration. And so you can submit it to Spotify and they will decide if it's good enough to be on the playlist. And this is a curation. This isn't just, maybe they're using an algorithm, maybe they're not, but I believe it's a curation for new music. Now, what if we tried to message the owner of a Spotify playlist? And so how to message the owner of a Spotify playlist? You can send a message in the Spotify desktop player, go to the playlist, and click on the creator's name. Okay, so once you go to their page, you can go to your algorithm and then just share and send them a message. And so that is all in here. So okay, so you could go figure out who the owners are, send them through that way. But there's probably a bunch of people doing this, and you have to find each person. And of course, you can't pay the editors to increase your chances of getting on the playlist. What about how to get on Spotify playlists? Because there has to be another way. Okay, they are actually whole companies that help with playlist promotion to the point where they've gained relationships with the people that have really popular playlists and update them frequently, and as well have gotten a relationship with people that are submitting songs and they're connecting the two people. And so these are the types of playlists in their network. So they're a network. They're not the ones actually creating the playlists, but they're a connection between the artists and the playlist. And so, of course, it costs money. Fun. Okay. So, of course, if you can't hack it, you can pay for it. So these are going to be for the independent Spotify playlists. And some of these are actually, this isn't really Spotify because it's lowercase. This one looks real. And they're talking about how their songs are on it. And your Spotify playlist creators will want this platform because they'll want to know, okay, what's, what songs are going to be new, what songs do they want to add, and have a more niche area to look at versus looking at every new song that's released. What this also means is if you owned a Spotify playlist that had a ton of monthly listeners, you could get paid to literally just listen to music and decide if it goes on your playlist or not. That's a pretty cool job. Discoverability is actually a really interesting topic. YouTube has it figured out with the YouTube algorithm and recommendations. Spotify has it figured out because of the playlists and all of that. For iPhone apps and Android apps, I don't really open the App Store app on my phone and no one really downloads apps anymore. It's also something that the Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant are really struggling with. Thank you so much for watching. If you want more data on Spotify or the Spotify algorithm, let me know. Also, also, be sure to check out my Podmeet's new single, IDFWU. Add it to your playlist so I don't have to do it for you. Just kidding. Happy coding.